is good, y'all. Back here with another video. We back on stream. It's like the eighth and ninth day in a row. Hey, we here with Podcast P. It's Monday, y'all. Fall. I forgot that every uh, Monday sports talk. I've been doing it ever since I started the channel. I'll never forget. At least Monday, obviously, since Undisputed's been down, we haven't been watching as much. And also, it's summer, so there's not as much basketball, football, obviously. So, um, but Stephen A. Went on the P podcast thing. You already know they had beef because Paul George was calling Stephen A. After what he said, and then Stephen A. on his own was calling him back. So now he's here. So I was like, why not go ahead and stream? I want to watch some of this uh, podcast piece. One of the best podcasts basketball wise. Um, I haven't been even been into that much. I've seen all the clips, but we finally reacted to the first one last week with Clay a little bit. We reacted to that on this channel as a sports talk. So again, another Monday, another podcast P. I was like, why not go ahead and stream it? You know, just chill, relax. See, uh, I'm probably not gonna watch all this. Probably like some to you by twenty-five to forty picks, minutes. A wave uh, sports and entertain. If anything. No, we got to bridge this together. Sure. Okay, hold on. No doubt. Let's see. Uh, so about like 25 to 40 minutes of this, I say, probably. It depends how entertaining it's it is. It's good to be here. I told you I will be here. Here I am. For sure. It comes out today. So let's see what Stephen A has to say on this. You see the uh, title, so maybe they just like... We love it. We love it. Yeah. out, whatever you know, we it is. Jump. We got to jump right into That's it. That's what we're going to see. It. You called out, you know, our brother here, Jackie Long, oh. right? You know, we, we don't oh, want no beef here. We got a show of beef. Right. Okay. But what we do, we... You know, we got to bridge this together. Sure. Huh. Just just stop, Pete. Stop. <laughs> just stop. 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 Let's see. First of all, how could yeah. I ever have beef with Stephen A. Smith? Okay. okay. First of all, I don't, I know who Stephen A. Smith is, but I don't know Stephen A. Smith to have beef. Right. Okay. Yeah. If anything, exactly. from me, all I want to know is how can I learn from Stephen A. Smith? Mm. Mm. This is one of the greatest journalists. The greatest analyst of all. Oh my mm -hmm. God! Why would I sit back like his... and have beef with a man that I need to learn for? I'm not gonna act the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Our show is a family-based home, eh. and we don't have interviews; we have conversations. Right. right. And that's what I'm here today right. to have with I... you to have a conversation like and learn that. all that stuff. I, I can like go that. on the Stephen A. Smith show, right. and we can talk about that and have some fun. <laughs> right. I can bring you a gift. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Be careful, because I might want one. Listen, I might want one. I would, I would honestly bring, bring right. you a gift. But right. here, right. we'd right. like our guests to honestly feel welcome, right. feel comfortable. And at the end of the day, we get to honor Stephen A. Smith. Right. They can talk all they want to in the comments, all this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the greatest at ignoring stuff. Right. But, man, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you here with us. Thanks so much. I am glad that you came. Shout out to Sherry McGee. I love her to death. And man, we really is a show that likes to be nosy. You know, we like to be nosy. And like you said, you have an amazing, huge resume. Right. And we want to just promo code. I was ready. And what he didn't realize until we came on the air was that. I have no problem with you because he never attacked me. Mm -hmm. He attacked what I said. Mm -hmm. Right. And my point is, that is fine. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, we all got different Everybody opinions. Opinion. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. But when you go that next step, so you said that about oh, no, me. Understand, Sambo, Jackie, that they're going to say it about you next month. Right. Mm -hmm. No man, they're going to say about you next year. You could be here. You could ultimately have the number one podcast. It's a damn good podcast. I'm proud of the job that y'all doing the whole nine. And no matter what you accomplish, yeah, they're going to take your fire. words <laughs> towards me and they're going to apply it to you. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. what did you do on that level? Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what I was saying to you. I said, you want to be careful about that. Right. Because the greatest accomplishment of my journalism career was when I got named the general sports columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer in 2003. Mm. The reason why is because this is before the advent of social media and all of that stuff. There was no Twitter. There was no Facebook, the Instagram, all of this other stuff. And in 2003, when you see a guy like Mike Wilbon walk in the streets, walking into an NBA arena, understand that y'all, y'all respect him. We revere him mm -hmm. because he okay. came up, him, Bill Roden, the late, great Ralph Wiley all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't, and they won't let me leave. Yeah, you got like, to stay here, you got to do these shows. Yeah. But anybody that knows me knows when I could get to a game, I roll up at the game. You'll see me on the court. Am I mm. lying? You'll see me at the court near the ground that. that this brother walked on. <laughs> and, and his say yes to everybody comment. Mm -hmm. But she loves Paul George for that. So, Stephen A., you recently Kyrie. spoke about your short-lived basketball career yep. uh, by admitting that I believe that you average less than one point a game. But mm. what I did not know is that you said that hey. you actually received a basketball scholarship. Yes, I was on a basketball scholarship at Winston-Salem State University my first year there. I cracked uh. my kneecap in half. And I, never, I was never able to play again. I kept trying to come back and practice, but this is in the late 80s. 
uh, technology wasn't then wasn't mm -hmm. then what it is now. Oh, <laughs> I was at a division You're two not school. Making the MBA, bro. They didn't have the facilities it's necessary for me to rehab. Bro. I actually had to leave school for a semester to go home under my mother's insurance to rehab because they wouldn't pay for the insurance in North Carolina at that particular oh. school because my mother's insurance wouldn't cover me there and they wasn't going to cover us there. They paid for the operation, but they didn't pay for the rehabilitation. Mm. So I never completely recovered from it. So I would come back, make the team, trying to practice. Oh. And once every 36 to 48 hours, my knee would just give out. I couldn't, I couldn't run without the limp and all of that other stuff. And that's what happened. So what I said was everybody teased me one and a half points a game. I said, no, it was less. I never played because I cracked my kneecap in half with your ignorant asses. You know what I'm saying? You didn't know. Right knee. Right knee. Right knee. Right kneecap. I still got a six inch screw in it to this very day. They never took it out. Okay. But I don't know about it. You never look at his game and went like this. He don't deserve his money. You look at his game and go like that. He deserves his money. But yo, bro, you got to get it done. But you know his game I talk about Kawhi, deserves bro. the money. Mm -hmm. I've been one that obviously, you know me, numerous players. And, you know, most recently a Kyrie or Russell Westbrook. But you ain't never heard me say they don't deserve their money. That's yeah. never come out of my mouth. Okay, because yeah, and not only that, mom. I usually don't talk about people's money until after you sign on the dotted line because I want all the brothers to get paid. And then after they get paid, I'll be like, this, "All right, now, now you know you lucked up, right? Because you did that. Damn it, you know, Anthony Davis, your new contract. Look, bro, yeah. I love AD, love AD. Talked to his daddy during the playoffs. I know he was a bit sensitive to what I was saying. Love AD as a person. Love him as a player. Sixty-two million dollars. Sixty-two million dollars. Let me tell you, son, bro. His talent is worth it. His consistency is not. He will show up one day." He will not show up the next. I agree. He will drop 40 in game one, 11 in game two. I agree. Now, me, I'd much rather have you know. averaging 28 to 30, night in, night out. Yeah. Rather than each and every night, it's like the damn roller coaster. I mean, you had Charles Barkley calling him street clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never called them that. I called them Six Flags. Street I six called them flags. Six Flags. Great adventure. It is a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster ride because he's up and down, up and down, up and down. Oh, but I got Jesus mad respect for this game. I know he's one of the elite players to to in this game today. Yep. But the consistency is not there. So when people will be like, "Well, you know what? He's a little bit uh -huh. upset." I'm like, "Where he at? Where he uh, at?" Yes. You know, I'm not gonna sit up there and argue with him in front of other people. But I would have went up to him and said, "Yo, bro, I said you're not consistent." I didn't say you was a scrub. I didn't say you can't play or whatever. You know good and damn well you're not consistent. Now, you can sit up there and talk all you want. I don't give a damn how great Jokic is. And he is great. Don't tell me you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You AD. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you dedicate it. And that's another thing we don't talk about uh, enough. There's certain cats Danny that want it. And there's certain cats uh, that just want a lot of the salary that comes with it in the lifestyle. Yep. I don't. I can't name people that I right. revere are those who I know of them, and they want it bad. All right. So from the 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 Philadelphia Inquirer, yep, to ESPN, yep. the face of ESPN, mm -hmm. might I add? Thank you. You've had uh, an amazing, or you pioneered an amazing career, right? Um, and for us hoopers, like we realized when we've per se started from the bottom and had our big break mm -hmm. in basketball, we've had that welcome to the league, you know, big league moment. Um, mm. From a journalist standpoint, what was that moment for you? The, the, mm. the big league, mama, I made it, journalistic moment for you. Well, like I said, when I became a columnist for the Philadelphia Choir was one. ESPN, when they hired me in 2003, was a big, big deal for me because my brother had died in a car accident in 1992. And I got this in my, sh in my book, Straight Shooter. Um, I wrote about that. You know, he died in a car accident in Texas in 1992. I had seen him in Georgetown, uh, Maryland, about two months prior. He died about three days before my birthday. Mm. And the next 20 years, I wouldn't celebrate my birthday because that whole week, the funeral and all of that other stuff, and every time it life. would just hit me and it was like, man, I don't, you, know, I don't, you know, I just felt bad. And um, my brother, the last conversation, the very last conversation we had before he passed, Two months later, he said to me, you're going to be a star for ESPN. You're going to be the number one sports commentator in America. Mm -hmm. Mark it down. You're going to take this damn industry by storm. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it. That's, deep. That's what he said. And so when he passed away, I made a promise to myself that I would never go back to see him at his gravesite. 
until I got hired by ESPN. And it took me 11 years. But when I got hired by ESPN, I went to his gravesite mm. and I said, I did it. You know, I did it. And I could hear his voice saying to me, actually, you didn't. I said you was going to be the biggest star. I didn't say you were going to arrive. Mm -hmm. You still got work to do. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, that was a big, big moment. Um, and, you know, at that particular moment in time, humility really, really kicks in for those of us who strive to be decent. And you think about my mom, God rest her soul, and all the things that she did for me, my brother, my four older sisters, all of that. But I also humor. thought about AI. Yeah. Tell and Buckhead. They about yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Paid. I don't want people looking at him and thinking that I've even gone on national television and said, yo, we got a problem with each other. That don't huh? mean y'all should. He a good dude. We just got our own private oh. issue that ain't no that ain't nobody's business. Oh. He know what it is, and I know what it is, you know? And so that's what it is, and we leave it at that. Where does that come from? Because is, is that just the Bronx in you? Like, <laughs> it it got to be a different, like, you, you got to be different. Know, There's nobody in the industry that could hurt me but you. And that was the first, um, he was so angry. And, uh, and they were saying, I can't come down there because he and his boys are looking for me and they going to do something. I'm like, what? Oh, AI? Man, you know, I yeah. got some gorillas we roll up. I know their story. I don't, okay. And I know what it is. I, in my mind, we all from the same place. We all come from the same cloth. Jesus, so I, why would you say, um, if I see him, it, it coach who's fine. But that's oh, you met a C. Kyrie and then we met gang. I thought this was going to be way longer, know, but it's definitely. I really, really did it, man. And, and, and when I see we... what he says, I realize. Hey, bro, I stream this on my delete because I'm a stream leader anyway. No matter what he said, no matter the bravado, no matter. Hi, man. Hey, this was a little underwhelming. I'm not going to laugh. I was going to be a little better. I thought they were going to talk about, like, Kawhi and the beep. And I don't know. Maybe they will. Let me see. Tom, I had to address it. I thought they were going to make a like little, like, back to like, about the Clippers. Because he talked a lot of shit about the Clippers. But notes to the public, the father loving his... Yeah, I heard that you uh, you played brick on General Hospital. Yeah, yeah. True. True. Job. He was natural. He was unbelievable. It's a different matter. Knees. When I'm working, <laughs> this player in the history of the NBA to go back and forth with and have a debating show, who would it be and why? Well, the obvious answer would obviously be Charles Barkley because of what we see him do. Um, he, you know, we see him on TNT for so long, we forget the brother is a Hall of Famer and one of the all-time greats. The presence and force. But the biggest people is his godfather, Rod Strickland. That's my man. You might be looking at me and he's personality. And what I want people to know, I want y'all to From succeed. a competitive standpoint? I'm a problem. You know, you know what I'm saying? To know I like you talk at you. I need to put these things on the video. And you're going off. Mm -hmm. But it, the shit. it is an insult. Ah, man, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually delete the stream. That's the sports talk for today. Let's, uh, man, 24 later. So I appreciate your support. Like, subscribe. Okay. My bad, y'all. I didn't stop recording, but hey, now I did. Catch you on the next. Ah.